Hi, Josh here, and you're watching 610 Garage. Learn it, build it, teach it. Today, we're making our own leaf spring shackles. These shackles will actually be lift shackles. I need just a little bit more room for my front axle. After cutting some 3 8 inch bar to length, I throw all four pieces into my mill. I square up both sides using a fly cutter. While this will make welding the sides a lot easier, its primary purpose is for drilling the holes on the mill. The flat sides will make clamping much easier. I'm also anal, so slight variations in sizes would irritate me to death. Now we drill the holes for the leaf spring bolts to go through. I am drilling all four pieces at once with my mill. If you don't have a mill, you can obviously use a drill press or even a drill. Though, I wouldn't drill them all at once with a drill press or a drill. If you're not perfectly square, chances are that the holes will be off. Now it's time to pretty up the shackles. I apply marking fluid to each end of the shackles. And now, with a round object and my knife, I score a radius onto the ends of one of my shackles. With a bandsaw, I cut off the excess steel, getting as close to my line as possible without going over. Then with my belt sander, I grind to the line, making a nice radius at the end of the shackle. Most people would be satisfied with a 3 8 inch thick shackle. You ought to know by now, I'm not like most people. We got a 610 garage this thing up. So I'm adding side rails. This will stiffen up the already beefy shackle. I cut some bar stock to length and I cut an angle onto these rails. I'm using the big bandsaw to accomplish this. To make each side rail the same, I clamped a scrap piece of bar stock into my bandsaw. This also helped the clamp work on my bandsaw. I usually have issues with such short pieces. I then pretty up the rails by grinding the corners into a nice radius. Now that right there is fancy. Now let's weld the rail to the shackle. I set up a jig on my workbench, using a scrap piece of steel to align the shackle. I then use a vice grip to position the rail. After welding and powder coating, we're done. Mostly. You may notice a third part in this pick. That thing is a spacer. This is recommended on shackle lifts. The longer the shackle, the more torque that is applied to it. The spacer helps keep the shackles from over deflecting, keeping the suspension stiff. While I made the spacer, I'm not using it for a couple of reasons. One, I messed up and made it too narrow. This is easily fixable, but there are a few other reasons. It's best not to have a spacer when off-roading. As I said, the spacer helps stiffen up the suspension, something that you do want on-road, but you don't want it off-road. And finally, I don't think I need it. I'm using stock leaf springs. Stock leaf springs are flat, so they will apply very little torque to the shackles. And even with my longer shackles, I don't think the torque will come close to what my four inch lifted leaf springs applied. Lifted leaf springs have a pretty severe arc to lift up the vehicle. So those leaf springs will apply a much higher torque than my stock flat leaf spring. But hey, I have the video of the spacer, so let's see how I made them. Maybe you'll want to add a spacer. Heck, I may still add mine. I start out by cutting some stock plate out of a sheet of quarter inch steel plate. I then cut out the sides of the spacer from the stock with the use of a bandsaw. Now I make a mock up spacer. This will be used to set proper spacing for the spacer. I use my lathe to drill a hole in some rod that I had laying around. And now for the part where I goofed. I face the ends to not only square up the mock up spacer, but to cut it to length. I must have mismeasured somewhere. The mock-up spacer ended up being a little too short. Now I know what you're saying, but I don't have a lathe. I use what I got. Maybe you can use a piece of pipe or some tubing. Maybe a chunk of wood with a clamp. You could also use the spacer that comes with the bushing kit. You could mock it up on your vehicle, or you could just measure. Come to think of it, that's probably what I should have done. I place the shackle sides on the mock-up spacer and bolt them together. I then place the sides of the spacer in between the shackle sides using clamps to hold them in place. I then jam some scrap steel into the ends of the spacer to align the spacer to the center of the shackle. I then tack and weld the spacer together. And I grind the weld smooth. 
I put the spacer back into the shackle. I jam the steel back into the ends of the spacer. I throw the assembly into my mill and drill two holes that will clamp everything together. You can use the same technique with a drill. Just do one side at a time. Don't go through both sides at once like I am doing though. If you attempt that, your holes won't be well aligned. If you made your own shackles, let me know in the comments below and let me know why you made them. Did you do it just for fun or did you need something completely custom? Also follow me on Instagram, 610GarageB. There you'll see all the stuff I am currently working on. Side note, YouTube is getting really bad with their creators. My last video got demonetized for no apparent reason. Thankfully it was fixed, but I don't trust YouTube anymore. So I am now posting my videos everywhere I can. One particular service is Vidme, but I need your guys' help. To become verified, which helps the channel, it's suggested to have at least 50 subscribers. So if you want to help, click the link in the description and follow me on Vidme. If not, no worries, 